Um, it is a joy to welcome Stephen Broomhead, the CEO of Warrington Borough Council and the Chair of Entrepreneurial Education at Liverpool Hope University. Um, Stephen, you're a self-declared natural optimist. What makes you optimistic? Uh, I think I've always looked at the conditions around me and uh, when things are miserable and people are miserable, uh, it can become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I've always wanted to be a realistic optimist, actually. Uh, when things get tough, you've got to think about the brighter side of life. And uh, I've tried to carry that in my own, um, my own personal life and certainly in the organisations I've led and worked in for the last uh, 30 years. Well, I think um, others um, who know you describe you as a realistic and infectiously optimistic leader. So how has that optimism helped you in your work and your career? Well, I mean, I remember really well uh, at the the crash in the UK in uh, 2008, 2009. And I walked through the middle of Manchester, which was a booming city, particularly for, the, for financial services at the time. And somebody had written on the wall, the light at the end of the tunnel has now been switched off. And that just had a reaction for me around, around optimism and basically wanted to say, look, there must be some green shoots. Uh, economies are actually driven in many ways by, by business confidence and, and being very positive and being optimistic. So I went away and I got criticised at the time for being virtually mad to say, look, this economy will come back. We've got to be optimistic. We will all work together to nurture and develop green shoots in our economy. And of course, the UK economy did come back. It didn't come back as quickly as people wanted. And that's what I see now with COVID. You know, we are hope we're entering a V, not an L, for our economy globally, as well as in the UK. And I think we've just got to be as optimistic as we can and think about the other side of this rather than think about the dark side with a lot of people, including economists and I just talking about. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. Well, look, you're the Chair of Entrepreneurial Education at Liverpool Hope University. And um, one of our areas of study has really been to show the very close association between strong optimism and successful entrepreneurship. I mean, given your professorial role, how do you see the relationship between entrepreneurship and optimism? You've got to look at the economic trends, um, but you've got to, uh, entrepreneurs cannot develop their businesses and be successful without a, a real set of values called, which are basically around optimism and creativity and to be agile in the development of their, of their, of their businesses. So as part of the curriculum offer at Liverpool Hope, um, I try to ensure that that is the, the dominant theme and values that, that students understand. You're never going to build a business if you're going to adopt a miserable attitude towards building that business and building your workforce. Now, you have uh, returned as the acting CEO of the Warrington Borough Council. So what makes you optimistic for the post-COVID uh, future um, of, the, the, of the city? Um, because uh, there are trends and there are different economic trends and different, different economic analysis. I've tried, I've got four and a half thousand staff and I've tried to deal with the situation of COVID, which has got to, obviously it's had its dark side in terms of the health impact and also the impacts on health inequality. But you've got to be optimistic about the future. Um, our government in the UK has done quite a good job trying to protect the economy but uh, some of those protections are now about to run out. And people are starting to talk about the light being switched off at the end of the tunnel again. I mean, for me, I've always wanted to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And if you can see it, as long as it's not a train coming the other way, I think that's really quite important. So it's all about uh, leadership. It's about communication and making sure people can understand, you know, there's always a way out of things if you work very hard. Where there's a will, there's often a way. Oh, fantastic. So are there any stories of, of optimism and hope you can share either from those four and a half thousand uh, workers who are um, being led by you and, and in the city in general? Well, we had to put basically two and a half thousand people on uh, home working. And the first issue for me around that was uh, trust. Would people be able to perform and do their normal work and produce the same level of outputs, as well as looking after the kids, doing home education, uh, 
dealing with uh, pets and animals all at the same time. And for some people, you know, being on their own and being isolated. But I'm really pleased to say that it's worked well. Uh, the second issue is about the sustainability of the, the IT support. I started this whole exercise of COVID 50 weeks ago here in the UK as a digital dinosaur. Never heard of Zoom, never heard of Hangout, never heard of Teams. But now, just like Buzz Lightyear, which is why I'm with you now in Melbourne at this very moment in time. So for me, it's been about addressing the positives of all this. Yeah. Um, and I've tried to uh, make that rub off corporately within my own organisation. It's interesting. We've done a study on a better normal. So a, a thousand people over 22 countries. And uh, we were getting about 70% of people telling us how they've built a better normal. And then News Limited, um, during yeah. its Australian papers, um, copied our poll. Um, and they got nearly 85% of their readers responding, looking at a better normal, you know, uh, yeah. not being stuck in a traffic jam on the way to work. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, Nick, so what are you seeing a better normal coming out of this? Well, I mean, on the environment, I mean, there's been a great leap forward on the green economy. And we need to try and make sure we bottle that, because obviously less traffic. Uh, um, Extinction Rebellion in the UK did me a favour. One weekend, they, they came and they put their uh, cycle lanes down. They chalked them out for them and painted them. But their version of what cycle lanes should be. Actually, we've gone with that. We just turn them into permanent cycle lanes. So people who sometimes just seem to be challenging and rebellious can actually do the right things. And we just followed that approach. I think sometimes you have to follow that follow that area. Interesting, going back to home working, uh, we did a survey of the staff who are home working, and 85% of them are really enjoying it. Yeah? The other 15% worry me the most because they didn't obviously the greatest support. But... Um, as I say, COVID's brought a lot of good things as well as bad things, really. Um, and also, I think relationships in a crisis are, are so different. They might, might not have found the vaccine yet for, for, for COVID, but somebody's found a vaccine, certainly in the UK, of cooperation, because people who worked in silos before now, working across silos and communication relationships are just so different. So as long as we can keep that vaccine going, uh, we're all going to work in a rather different way as a result of this, and I really value that. And how do you see the UK um, coming out of all of this? You're still negotiating with the EU on a free trade agreement. Um, my, my suggestion is you'll probably get a free trade agreement with Australia a little bit faster than the EU, but yeah. what's your take on, on the future of the United Kingdom separate from Europe? Um, I think it's going to be challenging. But yeah, going back to the theme of optimism, I just hope that with the, the right set of negotiations, things will work out all right in the end. But if you put COVID together with the impact of Brexit, uh, it could be a difficult and challenging situation. But uh, you, know, you have to have trust in leadership. You have to have trust in negotiators to come out with the right deal. But the delay um, on top of the economic implications of COVID could be significant. So, Stephen, you've got a, a passion for, for rugby and, and rugby league and, and Warrington's success. Um, tell me, what do you see as the future of rugby and the Australian-English rivalry? Um, I'm a great advocate. Uh, I've been involved in rugby league. I was, um, just give a plug for my rugby league uh, team, Warrington Wolves. Um, we played in Australia. Uh, I was chairman of it for, uh, for nine years. just hope the NRL is able to continue in Australia. Um, I hope it's going to get even stronger. We've got the World Cup here next year in the, in the UK. And um, we, you know, we've always had a really good relationship. Well, we hope you enjoyed that conversation between Stephen Broomhead and the Centre for Optimism's Victor Purton. Uh, if you'd like to get involved with the Centre for Optimism or have conversations with us about optimism, please go to our website uh, and you'll find contact details for Victor Purton and the Centre. Have a great day.